Gosh, fractals are beautiful. I could explore them for hours. The challenge is how to code them fast enough that you can explore them interactively. I'm Lucian Wishick, and I want to talk today about the Mandelbrot set, one of the most famous fractals. It's got a simple definition. Start with two variables, a and b, both set to zero, and repeatedly compute new values for a and b using this formula. a becomes a squared minus b squared plus x, and b becomes 2ab plus y. The question is, if you keep doing this over and over again, what happens to a and b? Obviously, it depends on the values of x and y, but for each different x and y, we'd like to know, do a and b stay small, or do they grow huge? And if they grow huge, how many iterations does that take? Let's use grayscale to show it. We'll use black if they stay small, we'll use dark gray if they get big only after lots of iterations, and we'll use light gray if they get big pretty quickly. And let's try it for a bunch of different x's and y's in this 5x5 five five grid and fill in the values for each square. So first, let's start with x is minus 1 and y is 1. So the Mandelbrot formula starts with a and b both 0. After the first iteration, a and b become minus 1 and 1. Next, minus 1 and minus 1. And then 1 and 3, and then minus 9 and 5, and pretty soon after that, A and B become huge. And that took just five iterations, so we'll color this top left square light gray. Next, we'll try X is minus a half and Y is 1. Again, we'll start with A and B both 0 and repeat the formula. And this time, it takes six iterations for them to become huge, so we'll color this square dark gray. I'll work through just one more pixel. Uh, this one is at x is 0 and y is 1. And this time, I notice there's a loop. Every other iteration, it gets the numbers minus 1 and 1. So this one will never get huge, and so we'll color it black. And if we repeat this for every single square in the grid, for a whole bunch of different x's and y's, the hint of a shape begins to emerge. But unfortunately, our 5x5 five five grid is too coarse to show the shape clearly. So let's try that again with a more fine-grained grid, this time 11 by 11, to see more intermediate values of x and y. And once again, we'll do all of the iterations for every pixel and shade it in accordingly. And this time we get more tantalizing hints of the shape, but it's still too coarse. How much if we ramped it all the way up, up to say 500 by 500? Let's think that through. 500 times 500 pixels times 50 iterations per pixel works out at 12 and a half million iterations. That's going to be pretty slow. So basically, we need some new technology at this point. And the technology we're going to use is the graphics accelerator that's inside your computer or phone, also called a GPU, graphics processing unit, and Microsoft's Win2D library for programming it. And the thing is, right, the graphics accelerator has up to maybe 2,000 processors inside it. So it can actually do a load of pixels simultaneously. Watch this. We'll start by filling out X and Y values for each pixel on the grid. Next, we'll set up A and B both at zero for every single pixel on the grid all at once. Then we'll do the first Mandelbrot iteration again for every single pixel all at once. And the next iteration and the next and so on. Well, that sped things up enormously. And if we wanted to do 500 by 500 pixels divided by the 2,000 simultaneous processors on the GPU, each processor only needs to manage about 125 pixels. So we'll finish the whole thing way faster. Well, that's the general idea. Let me tell you how I actually coded this up. When my app starts, it creates two bitmaps. I called them unit X and unit Y, where the intensity value of each pixel ranges from 0 to 1, depending where exactly that pixel is. Now, each time the user zooms or pans around the fractal, I'm going to get the graphics accelerator to do what it calls a linear transfer effect. That's a simple formula here, just 2 times the old intensity minus 1. And what this gets us is that now the intensity of each pixel gives the x and y values we need to do the Mandelbrot iteration on that pixel. By the way, I'm using pink for negative intensities and white for positive intensities. There's one more piece of prep work. I've created two more bitmaps called A and B, and I started them out as all black. So that's zero intensity value for each pixel. 
Now we're ready for the iteration. I'll get the graphics accelerator to do what it calls an arithmetic composite effect on A. And what that's letting me do is square the intensity values for each pixel. And then I'll do the same thing on B as well to square its pixel intensities. And then I'll do a composite add on both of the results plus the X bitmap. And once I get out the end of that is a new bitmap where every pixel is A squared minus B squared plus X, which you'll recognize it's just the Mandelbrot formula for the new value of A. And then we can do exactly the same on B. We'll do another arithmetic composite effect to get 2AB, and then another composite add to get 2AB plus Y, and that's the new value for B. And there's just one final effect I'm putting here to get A squared plus B squared, which we'll use as a measure for how huge A and B have become. And let's repeat this process now for 50 iterations. And what we get out the end of this is the Mandelbrot set. OK, so this is great. Let's look at the actual code to accomplish it. The code comes in two parts. First, when the app starts, we create in advance all of the bitmaps and all of the effects we're going to need later on. So the code here, it's creating the arithmetic composite and the composite add effects that will be used during the iteration. And all it's doing here is wiring them up and providing the coefficients for their formulas. Then, when the app's running and it needs to draw the Mandelbrot set, well, the command to actually perform those effects is just called draw image. That'll take the A and B bitmaps, do the effects, and write the results into A prime and B prime. Then we can swap the bitmaps around and repeat the iteration. Well, how does it perform in practice? Pretty dang fast. Here, I'm using my fingers just to pinch and drag and zoom around, and it's basically instantaneous. <laughs> this is a lot of fun. And what's great is that this runs fast on all Windows 10 devices, from cheap phones like my $90 Lumia 635, all the way up to high-end desktops, Xbox, heck, even HoloLens. This is all looking great, but before I finish, I want to tell you about some gotchas along the way, some of the murky implementation details. Here, look at these two pictures. There's a screenshot from desktop on the left and from phone on the right. Do you notice how the desktop has more detail and how the phone looks a bit more jagged? Ultimately, that's because the desktop GPU works with single precision numbers. Those are accurate to about 0 0.000001 in the ranges we're looking at. But the phone, my phone's pretty cheap, it only uses half precision, which is only accurate to about 0 0.0001. And so the jaggies, they just come from rounding errors. So basically, on my phone, I can't zoom in too much, otherwise it starts to look bad. But look at these two pictures. Even when zoomed out, there are still differences. And they boil down just to this. My phone's older generation GPU was only designed for games to look just good enough. It totally was not designed for pixel-accurate mathematics. Now, I think that will very likely change in the coming few years, of course. The final detail I want to tell you about is this. For our computation, we only needed a single intensity value per pixel, but the GPUs I'm using only support four components per pixel, a red, a green, a blue, and an alpha. Now, we could just do a grayscale by making the three RGB components identical, but that would be a waste. It would be doing the same calculations three times over. So instead, what I've done is I've multiplexed. I've used each different component for different XY coordinates. And then I did the iteration on these multiplex bitmaps. It got a bit gnarly right at the end when I had to demultiplex the data out so I could display it on screen, but it was worth it for the threefold speed up. Now, the source code for all of these is available online on GitHub. And the source code online has a few other features. It's got color, and it dynamically adjusts its perf to match the device it's running on. I hope you'll download it. I hope you'll have a go. I hope you'll explore the fractals. And I hope you'll have fun writing your own graphics accelerated libraries. Thank you very much.